I wanted to clarify my last video on this vehicle, which was telling you what we were thinking we wanted to do, but I wasn't real clear because I had a couple of guys not understand what I was planning on doing here. Now, I'm going to say this fast. Think 1966 to 1971 Fairlane Ranchero, not a Falcon Ranchero because they were built differently. In the Fairlane Ranchero, this section from here to here, from here over to the other side was a solid plate. It was welded into the Ranchero and that's what I'm gonna do here. The plate that goes from here to here will be a bolt-in plate instead of a weld-in. We wanna be able to take that plate out because we have shock absorbers that we cannot reach in any other way uh, than through this plate. The weather set up on the Ranchero, on this particular style of Ranchero, they come in through here and they even do that on the Fairlanes as well. So, after the break, we're gonna start grinding and welding and doing all kinds of stuff to get us to the point to where we can split this plate and kind of give you a little bit better idea of what I'm talking about, okay? Okay. For 45 years, the Miller family and the dedicated staff at Autocrafters have been here helping you to restore your dream Ford. Thank you for your support. Here's to another 45 years of delivering parts for your Falcon, Fairlane, F100, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. Now, real quickly, I want to talk about something. I have a bend in this plate here. It's kind of doing this number. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move into the uh, bed of the Ranchero here in just a second, and I'm going to pull this out with one of my pieces of bar, and I'm going to tack weld right there. Talk to Logan about that. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty straight on this side. The gap over here is a little bit bigger, but I'm not gonna do a whole lot of fretting over that. So here's hoping this slag doesn't get me in the crotch. That would be bad. Immortal words, Dad's everywhere. That's not going anywhere. I have to grind her a little bit to get her leveled out so I can put the other plate on here because it is still offset just a little bit from the other one. I want that as straight as I can possibly get it because I am going to use the measurement across here to set the other plates up. So this really does need to be fairly straight. The true temptation to say that's not going anywhere is nearly overpowering. I'm running out of excuses now. It looks like we're going to have to start looking at working the plate. All right, I'm going to set the plate again. I've made my marks, and I'll show you those in just a second. So loud. Now, here's my gambit, if you will. What I'm planning on doing here is this plate I will have some play in. I'll be able to go in and actually work this forward or backward a little bit depending on what this plate's doing when it lays out. This plate will be welded in, so again, I'm not as worried about it. Now, this is our outside line. This is our inside line for the, the bar that runs out across or the plate that runs out across here. This is basically close to center line, so what I'm hoping to do, I'm gonna pop a chalk line from here 
over to the other side and then just split the plate and then I will work this section over here. What I'm probably going to end up doing is coming just a little bit inside of this toward the front plate. I do have some lee room this way on it, so I'll, I'll lay my chalk line out and then I will probably, like I said, come to this side of it just a little bit to give me more meat and potatoes to put down for this back section of plate. So I'm going to grab my chalk line and throw that in there. Because I'm on that curve, it could be a real pain in order to get that to lay where I want it to and not be off. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to pull a chalk line, then I'm going to go in and actually uh, lay out a um, tape and make sure we're good and tight on center. <laughs> to do that yet I want to get my tape measure and measure it. All right, I got a tape measure here I'm going to pull this a little tighter until like right there and to that to that line we're 11 and 3 quarter and I'll go measure it on the other side as well. Right there, we're at 11 three quarter. Now, what I'll do is go back over to this side and do the measure again. Okay, now I'm going to snap a chalk line, and then I'll do another measure on it. Not the best chalk line I've ever done, but it should tell me what I need to know. You'll note if you watch me doing enough of this stuff that I am always measuring. It's pretty much spot on 11 and 3 quarters. So now I've got a chalk line and I can set up something and actually mark this plate up over on my stand. Keeping my Sharpie marker angled to do this so that it's up close to that piece of steel that I've got on top to make sure I get a hard line. What I found with cutoff wheels is that you can run them and what can happen is if you have a piece of steel kind of holding position, if it's not super duper tight, it can actually walk on you. And what I mean by walking is, is it can actually start uh, moving in a different direction. You don't realize it while you're cutting because you're so intent on the cut. Nothing like potentially screwing up somebody else's part. <laughs> and a bed plate like this is going to be really hard to come by. This would kind of put us at an all stop on Logan's car for a little while if I mess this up. In the immortal words of a friend of mine, no pressure. All right, I'm going to have about a sixteenth of an inch cut with my cutoff wheel that I use uh, to split this. I've got this sitting on a rack that I got from Bed Bath & Beyond. This rack is one that uh, I'm using for this kind of stuff, that's all I really bought it for, so I could use it as kind of a, an open cutting table, especially on something like this that is so stinking flimsy. I'm going to do my best to keep a vertical cut on this when I'm doing it so that I'm not going one way or the other. I'm talking and I'm not working. A nice mechanic gloves that I got from Ron Bell, one of our viewers.
it's really scary when you're working on something like this and you have no idea whether or not it's going to actually fit the area because I am notoriously bad at making those kind of cuts. And uh, it looks to me like we worked out pretty well. We're right about where we need to be. Uh, I'm going to grab the other plate real quick and throw it in there and see what that looks like. All right, well Ford has a fine tradition of wiggle room and I think we've got enough wiggle room here to make this work. Uh, we'll put bolt sets here and we'll match the original bolts across the back. And I may or may not try to go in and add another plate out across here for us to bolt to for this section here. Unless he puts a lot of bricks in there like he's talked about doing, this should do him very, very well. You'll be able to access that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I plan to do what I talked about. Now a lot of you guys wrote in. I do appreciate you guys writing in and telling me some ideas. I liked all of them. Uh, a couple of them were really good. Robert McCartney, he's got a show here on YouTube as well. He doesn't do as much right now, but he has been doing some stuff in the past. Robert thought that we should probably go in and hinge this plate. I like that idea, but there's really no storage back there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark back one inch on these on the plate here for my set line all the way across. And I'm going to set a bar. That was painful. Now I'm looking the back side of this to make sure that this lays in a little bit. Make that in just a little too much. Now I gotta flip this over and I'll go in and do a weld. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put a spot weld on either corner here before I weld in these uh, other areas. I wanna make sure I don't have a blowout when I do that, so I'm gonna go in just a little bit from the edge. Those corners like that are gonna be super hard to uh, not blow out. Am I going to show you all of these being done? No, because there's a lot of them and there's ones on the other side of the plate as well. So you're not going to get to see that, but you did get to see how I'm doing what I want to do. Now I'm going to throw it back in the bed so you can see how it looks in position. You can see the difference between one of the other risers here. This is the one that I cut. Now the reason I put that in there is so that it would bend down easier and it will all bend basically in the same spot. This one doesn't have that and you can see now that this is laying down on top of this plate. So what I'll do is, is I'm going to go and grind all that clean on that top edge there and then be able to go in and actually uh, weld this stuff straight down to this, this gray plate. And that should get us where we need to be.
basically all I'm trying to do is to show you that there is always a way to do stuff like this. You're always going to be able to find something that's going to make it work well for you. I was really nervous about cutting this plate in half because quite frankly, like I said, I don't even know where I would go find another one of these plates. Uh, but there you go. You have this one basically done and I'm going to go ahead off camera and finish up the rest of these. Uh, I've learned off of the first one because this one I didn't cut these edges back immediately and I probably should have with my grinder. I should have just cut them smooth and then that way they would be in good shape. I also have a blow through right here which I'll need to repair that but the rest of these should go along just about like that one does and I'm hoping that with this it'll also make that plate a lot more stable whenever I'm using it. So I'm going to pull this out, go and work them and then uh, we'll close this thing out. All right, so here we go. Um, this actually turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to. I'm pretty happy about it. Uh, I like the way this is going and the direction it's heading in. Well, we may get some uh, lead product from the guys like Eastwood. It's not really lead anymore. It's an alloy of some type that works like lead uh, and just go in and really clean that facing up. But Logan wants to put bed liner in here, so I don't even know if I'm going to do anything like that. I'm going to, the only thing I'm really worried about at this point is just making sure this thing is seam sealed so that it's uh, not going to let any water inside the cab. There is a heap of body work that needs to be done to this big panel right here in order to get everything ready to go to have it welded in for final. And I'm not going to necessarily go in and do that on video because I've got a lot of things that need to be done and it's going to take me a little while to make those things happen. I may also go in and do this plate here, this back plate that's going to be bolted down. I may do the same thing with it that I've done with the front plate where I actually cove these down at the same distance, one inch back, and drop that down all the way across so it kind of matches the bed plate that's going to be welded in. It will then look something like what a 68 Ranchero looks like with regards to what the plate is. But folks, do me a favor. Be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week and we'll see you on down the road. I keep saying this, but it's actually coming together. Just wish I had a blasting system because I would love to blast this bed and just make it nice. But I'm afraid that all the lumps in the wheel wells and everything are going <laughs> to make me get mad and have to go in and fix all those and I don't want to do that. Let's just spray bed liner in there like Logan wants to, right?